It's time to explore the wild, wild east and the stories coming out from the Ukrainian and Russian conflict at the moment. An important thing to note here is the fact that a lot of the information that we're getting is being filtered through news agencies, mainstream media outlets and the like, and even the information that's coming out that we're certain of is difficult to tell whose interpretation of particular information is accurate. Mm. That's one of the most difficult things. A lot of us have never really been involved or around during a conflict of this scale, of this kind of context before. So it's difficult to understand what is true and what's false that's been coming out of there. And it is very important to try and remain skeptical of the information that we see coming, especially any notable war hero stories or anything of the like like that. And another thing to take note of as well is that in debunking and checking a lot of this information, you also have to be wary of the people checking it and whether they are accurate when they're correcting the information yes, as well. Quite. So it's very complicated. It's kind of a sort of a deluge of information that we're very uncertain of. But but we can be sure of a few things. There are a few people actually over there in Ukraine right now who you wouldn't really classify as typical news sources, but who could be used for some if you want to know mm -hmm. how it's kind of unfolding on the ground. One being our old chum, Miles Rootledge, Lord Miles himself, mm -hmm. who is currently in Ukraine. I think he was in Kiev. I think he's heading to Kharkiv. Um, at the moment, last update that I saw was that he was being protected by a band of uh, Ukrainian female soldiers. So oh. sounds like he's having a lovely time of it, to be yeah, perfectly sounds like honest. He's in good company. Uh, you know, so obviously he streams on YouTube as well, so you can check him out for some sort of casual updates of what's going on in his local area. Interestingly enough, we also have people like Coach Red Pill who I was only aware of re uh, previously as being one of those um, chat-up artists, mm. I think. And he's in... He's in Ukraine because I think he's got a wife and children in there and he's given an update on his telegram which is very unexpected on the 27th of February where he said that at the current pace of operations the Russians will completely capture Ukraine within 7 to 14 days. They're winning and winning decisively so I don't know the accuracy of that. When, when, when did he say that on the 27th? On the 27th which would be Sunday. Yeah that, that, that would be how it looked at the time. At the time but we'll see how well, uh, how well that prediction comes to pass mm. as it goes on but there are people in Ukraine as I've said, like these people who are giving updates, whether accurate or not, they're sort of giving their opinions. But the mainstream media outlets have been focusing on a number of specific stories. One being this particular woman, the Ukrainian woman, who has kind of mm. become the face of the conflict. You've probably seen her plastered across front pages of the Daily Mail, oh, yes. the Sun, all those kinds of pages, uh, papers, where it's saying a woman whose face has become one of the faces of war in Ukraine has spoken of her ordeal and says she is lucky to be alive. The picture of teacher Elena Carrillo, with her head bandaged and face covered in blood, has become synonymous with the horror of the crises evolving in Russia, uh, uh, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. 52-year-old survived a shelling by Russian forces in Kharkiv in eastern York, Ukraine, but her home was completely destroyed. So that's where I'll leave it with that woman at the moment. Obviously, the pictures that are involved pretty brutal. It doesn't mm -hmm. like she's having a great time of it and kind of indicative of the suffering that the individual's on the ground are going through. There's other stranger stories coming out from Ukraine, such as this one, where it's saying that Invaders will die. Former Miss Ukraine joins fight to defend her country from Russia, uh, which also involves this one very specific picture that you can see on the left of her holding what appears to be, and we'll get into this a bit later, mm -hmm. appears to be an assault rifle geared up to fight against the Russian invaders. Anastasia Lena, Ukraine's 2015 representative in the Miss Grand International Beauty Contest, has answered Volodymyr Zelensky's call for civilians to defend their homeland, according to her Instagram account. <laughs> Since the launch of Russia's invasion on Thursday, the model has shared a string of posts on her Instagram story urging support and soliciting donations to the Ukrainian armed, armed forces. In a recent Instagram story, the invaders will die on our land. All the world will see this. And in an earlier post, accompanied by the photo of armed soldiers blocking a road, she said, everyone who crosses the Ukrainian border with the intent to invade will be killed. What we'll find out as we go on is that there's a little bit of context that a lot of these uh, news outlets have been leaving out of these Instagram right. posts and these photos, but you can obviously see judging by the look, the intent is to make it seem as though she is 
actively engaged in combat on the, fr on the front on line. The front line. Yeah. Exactly. And then there is probably the most famous initial story to have come out of this, which was the story of the ghost of Kiev, who is has appeared at terms to both be Alec Baldwin, Sam Hyde, and a number of other internet memes, hmm. uh, if you've seen those images. Social media has been ablaze with outlandish claims of a pilot known as the ghost of Kiev, who's reportedly traversing the skies and taking down Russian jets. But does the Ukrainian flyer really exist? And this is where a lot of these stories, you start to see the cracks and you start to ask questions about them. A number of videos posted to Twitter showed a jet soaring through the sky amid speculation the pilot had downed six Russian planes on the first day of Vladimir Putin's war with Ukraine. A photo purporting to show the MiG-29 fighter pilot was tweeted on Friday by former Ukrainian president Petro Poresh uh, Poroshenko, uh, adding to speculation the exploits might be true. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense also seized on rumors of the flyer's heroics and tweeted an image of the MiG-29 as, par as part of a post reporting that retired pilots were returning to the Air Force. The tweet said, who knows, maybe one of them is the Air Avenger of the on the MiG-29, which is so often seen by um, Kievites. The Ukrainian government posted a dramatic 30-second video on its official account, saying the flying ace dominated the skies and is a nightmare for invading Russian aircraft. However, there is a big but on this narrative, which is it's not certain that the ghost of Kiev actually exists. Yeah. And the one major clip that was going around that showed the fighter pilot racking up n multiple kills and got 5 million views on social media uh, has been debunked because it's actually from a 2008 video game. Oh. Digital Combat Simulator. What a dreadful shame. Aviation experts have also said that the claims of a fighter pilot downing six planes in a day is pretty doubtful. And mm. as far as I'm aware from, I'm not an uh, air combat expert, but it does sound pretty unlikely that you'd be able to be so efficient in just yeah. one day. And we've got uh, other people who are talk talking about it. Here's, if you want to click on the image, we've got check marks. Adam Kinzinger sharing, the ghost of Kiev has a name and has absolutely owned the Russian Air Force. Godspeed and more kills Samuelil. <laughs> Seemingly completely unironically not noticing yeah. that this is an obvious Photoshop yes, of, of our glorious hero Samuel Hyde, mm. um, <laughs> which is very amusing that a, a number of check marks seem to have been falling for a number of these more obvious ruses that have been put about and bandied about on the internet. Here's another image. Uh, here's another thing that he might have shared. Oh yeah, he also shared this image of what appears to be small children saluting a passing Ukrainian tank with military force And yeah, the on child it. has a gun as well. Uh, I assume that's a small toy plastic gun, mm, but still, right. uh, this is obviously supposed to be like, ah, look at them all saluting their brave boys and soldiers going out to fight against the Russians. And the, the, the question isn't obviously whether or not people are going out and fighting for their homeland, for Ukraine, and I believe it's true that they were blocking exit from the country to... Uh, adult uh, male fighter, fighters, mm -hmm. people between the ages of 18 and 60. But the question is whether all of these images and some of this stuff that you're seeing uh, is, is true. Yeah. And if we go to the next link as well, you can see something else that I'm sure Kinzinger would probably have shared if it, if it had been attributed. Here's uh, the ghost of Kiev obviously having to eject from his jet just in case, fires yeah. a rocket launcher into a fighter. This is obviously a video game. Yeah. I think this is this is Battlefield 5 or something, isn't it? Some, either that or Call of Duty. One of those ones. This is yeah. one of those it was a big meme when the trailer came out. It's like, yes, this is what modern warfare truly looks like as the ghost of Kiev He's is proving. demonstrating, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there was also the big story, this one I was really sad to hear about, uh, of Snake Island, the Ukrainian soldiers who were supposedly killed after refusing to surrender to a Russian warship mm. while defending Snake Island. Ukraine has honored 13 soldiers who were killed defending a tiny island after reportedly swearing at a Russian ship that ordered them to surrender. In unverified audio clips, the border guards defending Ziminyi Island in the Black Sea are told to lay down your weapons or be bombed. Russian warhip go to hell, they responded. I've heard the clip, it was actually, uh, tell them to go F themselves, mm. so they say go F yourself. Ukraine says they were then killed by air and sea strikes. Russia denies the account, saying that they all surrendered. So both narrative, both sides are trying to push narratives that fit one side, and this is where you see the divisions start to come in, that a lot of what we're hearing from that, uh, from that area currently, because of the conflict, is likely to be 
a little bit skewed mm. depending on who's telling you what because each side is going to have their own incentives to try and propagandize events for their own purposes of morale boosting morale on the yeah, battlefield you know something like the ghost of kiev may not be true but it sounds like a uh, rousing war story mm. to get the troops to go out there and put their own lives on the risk. If there's a man going out there and taking out all these Russian fighter pilots just by himself, then you can do uh, have that same impact, which is noble. It's just whether over here we're reporting it as true or not, because yeah. I would say the truth takes precedent over everything. And if we move along, we've got other people like Eliza Schaefer saying, is this real or propaganda? Ukraine said the soldiers are dead. Russia says they took the soldiers prisoner and didn't kill them. And one of the story, one video spreading the initial story hit 27 million views wow, on TikTok. So not. whether you get the right impression of this whole situation or not is very important when it's reaching about 27 million mm. people. And uh, sa uh, well, not sadly, obviously, I don't want these people to be no, dead. No, of course not. Uh, but in terms of the actual tragedy of the story, turns out not to have been true. Move along. And we can see that there are video of the soldiers who were captured that was given by Russia Today. Obviously, Russia Today, state media outlet, but I do believe that the Ukrainian Mil uh, Ministry of Defense has also confirmed that mm. this is true as well. So you've got, to be, you've got to be careful with all of this stuff, but this is also why it's important that we don't, even though we already have, I believe, we, that we don't and shouldn't ban channels like Russia Today no, from so being either. shown, because whether or not they have their own political spin that they want to put on it, it can still still be very useful and very informative to get another side of this uh, of the story that mm -hmm. we're not getting um and this is all uh, oh if you move along yeah you can see here yeah uh, fox news the snake island defenders who defied russian war, uh, warship captured alive not killed confirms the ukrainian navy so there you have it as well uh, they were captured alive by russia after initial reports claimed the service members died the russian attack decimated the island's infrastructure and the crew of a ukrainian sapphire civilian ship sent to the island to aid victims were also captured we are very happy to learn our brothers are alive and well with them the ukrainian navy said so happy-ish ending. Obviously, uh, it would have been better if they didn't have to be captured at all, because I doubt it's very nice being captured. Yes. But better than being dead is all mm -hmm. I can say. And this is where we get into the rest of the misinformation that has been spread. Uh, this is a great thread by a man called Brian McNally, who... I would say be careful of. This thread has some great resources for stuff that is verifiable mm -hmm. and able to be debunked. But McNally does end this thread by basically saying, as a result of all this fake news I've uncovered, I have come to the, uh, come to the conclusion the entire conflict is fake and oh, is not happening. What, right, so this and is when just... we've got people, when we know, we know Callum talks to him, that people like Miles are there mm. actually experiencing the uh, what, what's going on, obviously it's not fake, unless Miles is just an even deeper operative than we first suspected. But Brian would nonetheless like to claim that they're both part of the Matrix as well. I would only assume so. But despite his own nuttiness, there is something to be said for the collection of resources that we've got through this thread. So this picture that I pointed out earlier that showed the children saluting the tank is not fake, but it is from 2016. So it's not actually mm. from the, this conflict. It's from uh, probably some other sort of military recruitment picture where they're like, oh, let's uh, get people to sign up for the military, uh, look at the kids waving, or maybe it was part of the ongoing skirmishes that were going on in the um, in the eastern areas and Donbass provinces. Region, yeah, yeah. The Donbass region. Uh, then there is also the image I showed earlier talking about the woman People are claiming that this is fake, trying to say that this particular woman... I would be very, very careful with this one because this is one that I've seen lots of other people other than just McNally claiming to be fake. And once again, this is where you have to be careful of the people who are mm. supposedly debunking this as well, which is I have tried to look into it because people are attributing these photos to a gas attack in 2018. And you can see there they've got images of Dyer Stein 2018, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I and John have both tried to verify if those photos were taken or taken from a particular date. McNally doesn't include any sort of reverse Google image right. searches to verify it either. They just put up this one image saying, oh, it's, it's from 2018, but I can't verify it. Okay. And as far as I'm aware, 
not many other people can verify so we it as well, other than these screenshots. Then. Yeah, so I'm going to suspend judgment and just assume, given the information that I've got available to me, that that woman was actually uh, affected and uh, caught in a blast and obviously has been very, uh, very badly injured. Uh, plus, I think you can also access the uh, Twitter account of the people who took those photographs, and it does seem to all line up date wise from the 24th of February when the photos were taken. Mm. Uh, but then there's other things like photos and videos being taken from films. People may have seen these particular images where it's like loved ones. Uh, scroll to the next one just so we can see it, John. Thank you. Ukrainian soldiers leaving their loved ones to fight for their country, absolutely heartbreaking. This all turns out to actually be a little clip from a film. It's pretty sinister, isn't it? From 2017. I don't know how sinister it is. I mean, I can understand why they would sort of want to repurpose things because I imagine there are probably experiences like this going on. It's just the use of the film just, footage. Just is... the playing off of emotion. Um, yes, I mean, I, I, I was thinking a real life conflict. You don't have to resort to no, using. You, no, you don't. You don't need to fetishize this anymore. Yeah, because obviously or, these sorts of experiences will we'll probably be having with people who are, uh, you know, having to flee the country because the women having to flee the country, the men not being allowed to flee the country. Mm -hmm. This is something that will be going on. But just be careful of the images you use and make sure that they're being used in the right context. Yes. Then there's other stuff like John. If you'd like to move along. The uh, images of Kiev's mayor, whose name I've, is blanking on me, Kalinsky, something... I, I don't know. Something like that. These photos of him, which were supposedly made to look as though he's, you know, like, sat at a turret, ready to shoot at some Ukrainians. You've got Mike Pompeo. Uh, he will fight as bravely for Ukraine. Russians. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> fight the Russians. Oh, no, I'm spreading fake news. God. Um, but yeah, this, this one, obviously, is supposed to look like he's about to sh shoot a load of Russians, yeah. making it look like he's on the front lines. These photos, actually, from last year. I don't know what the context yeah. was, but I've seen that the, you can reverse Google search them, and uh, you are able to see that they, yeah, uh, they are from 2018, uh, 2021, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other funny one is the fact that Miss Ukraine fighting... Uh, one of the things they left out from those Instagram posts is that she's actually holding an airsoft rifle. Right. This appears to be some kind of photo shoot that was done, probably once again for propaganda I was and about, morale. I was about to say, actually, her skin complexion's far too good yes. for this to be an, an actual warfare shot, if it, you like. Yes, it's definitely done for morale purposes. And on the Instagram posts themselves, she, made, she hashtags airsoft gun. Oh. and other such things. Obviously, I can't read mm. Ukrainian and Russian, but I would assume that she also points out and then, but the news media outlets that we have over here picking it up and trying to make it look like she is on the front lines already. Mm. From what I'm aware, because uh, I've watched the Quarterings video discussing this as well, she might actually be signing up to try and get onto the front lines of it, which was Fair very right. admirable and very oh, yes. brave of you. But still, photos being used out of context to try and construe a different narrative. Mm. And then there's possibly the funniest one, I'd have no idea what the context of this one is, but there's this image going around, which is Fox News talking about Ukrainian civilians, and these men have very obviously cardboard guns in their hands. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, what, just spotted it. I don't know what the context of this is. I don't know why. Perhaps it is just to sort of pre uh, present a different yeah. front. Perhaps they don't have the appropriate amount of weapons needed. But if you're going to talk about, you know, the Ukrainian civilians taking up mm. arms, you might want to actually show footage of people with real guns yeah. in their hands. And um, like I say, this particular thread is very useful, but does conclude that the conflict is fake, which is nonsense. Yeah. Don't listen to that. Be skeptical of everything, including from us, because we're not going to get everything right. Of course not. Yeah. Uh, be skeptical of everything that you're hearing coming from that region, because there's going to be so much misinformation, purposeful disinformation, and also just propaganda being used by both sides. And people like Dan Crenshaw mm -hmm. are falling for it on Twitter. Uh, he's saying, um, this This is from the 25th, so this is before most people knew that a lot of this had been debunked. Yeah. But Snake Island says, go F yourself. Ghost of Kiev kills five Russian jets. Ukrainians are fighters. Putin can go to hell. Be careful not to get swept up in all of this. Mm. As John has said, as far as we're all concerned, this appears to be a choose-your-own-adventure war because we've got this image showing the same the same image reported by different people saying it's captured U uh, Russians in Nikopol. Uh, and then also captured Ukrainians in Nikopol. Which mm. is it? We honestly don't really have any 
particular way of verifying yeah. it for the most part when it's just out of context images like this unless you're aware and able to tell the difference between the get up that the ukrainians and the russians are wearing in mm. which case you're obviously more informed than i you am. need to be a uniform expert clearly and just to, just to close this off uh, one of the worst things to come out of this whole operation just as a little cheeky side note is the fact that for some reason the meerkats ads have been pulled over ukrainian war sensitivities mm. for some reason uh, this is the uh, this is the thing that's hit me closest to home hit me in my heart right here compare the market price comparison site has pulled ads featuring the animated rich russian meerkat alexander orlov oh, from news no. bulletins and content about the ukraine war the firm stressed in a statement meerkats are fictional characters you mean they're not real i I'm thought the talking me russian meerkats were real i'm so Oh, this is so disappointing. They continue, they have no association with Russia and the current situation. We are continually reviewing our advertising to ensure we're being sensitive to the current situation. So they're going to have to find new mascots oh, for that, the time being. That is a dreadful shame. I never thought I'd see the day where the actual meerkat of all meerkats was actually cancelled. I know, it's really, it's really mm. str uh, stressing. I hope they're treating him well while he's been sent to his internment camp. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that was just a little cheeky side note to end it off with. Sad times indeed, but be careful mm -hmm. of the news that you're hearing. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium podcast between Carl and Thomas on the origins of the Dark Enlightenment. Very spicy indeed. And if you want to follow Carl, you can also follow him at Getter at, at Carl Benjamin. Thank you and goodbye.